Uh, so I'm Chris Lindner. Uh, I'm a fourth year graduate student at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm studying for my PhD in astronomy here. Uh, I, got my under, I did my undergraduate work at the College of Charleston where I got a bachelor's of science in physics and a bachelor's of arts in astronomy. And then I also got a master's uh, here at the University of Texas. Um, so physics is uh, the study of sort of the most fundamental way the universe works. Uh, everything from, you know, how do electrons interact with other particles on the smallest scales to how does gravity work or, uh, you know, you can study, you know, you study astrophysics and look at how do stars work and how does that go on? Or you can study nuclear physics and say how do nuclear power plants work? How do we get energy from that? You try to understand all the basic fundamental concepts of the way the universe works. You know, how does energy work? Uh, how do things heat up? How do things cool down? What happens when things get really hot? What happens when things get to tiny, tiny, tiny temperatures? You know, it, it gives us just a bigger picture and a bigger understanding of everything that's going on in the universe at the most fundamental level. I think if you're really interested in problem solving, if you really enjoy figuring out how things work, taking them apart, putting them back together, or trying to figure out, you know, why is this desk solid, or, you know, why is water feel wet, or why do, you know, particles or chemicals or anything interact at the smallest of levels, you know, if you really have these questions and you really want to understand fundamentally how the world works, and I think it's a great major for you. Yeah, so physics has a lot of different job paths you can go down. If you want to stay in the field, you can go to graduate school and get a PhD in physics or astronomy and go and do research uh, in the future. Uh, you have other options as well. There's a lot of job market demand for physics majors. Basically, things like engineering, a lot of engineering courses overlap with physics courses. And so a lot of physicists will, after they graduate, go get a job in engineering. Uh, you tend to pick up a lot of computer science skills when, you, when you're studying physics, and so that as well is a huge hiring base for this. Uh, people, a lot of people go to medical school. It's a very competitive degree for medical school to get a physics degree, um, and it really can set you apart. Uh, there's other jobs as well. In The government has a lot of different jobs for it. A lot of government labs are hiring physicists to do research for them as well. Um, and it could just kind of set you up even for the business world. It's just a different type of degree that shows that you're really good at problem solving, really good at figuring things out, have a strong math skill and all that. It just gives you a very broad skill set uh, and shows that you can really accomplish a lot with this uh, type of degree. So typically when you're, start, uh, when you're studying physics, you start off by learning sort of just basic mechanics. You know, why is it when you throw a football, is it arc in the air? Or if you fire a cannonball or something like that? Or why is it when you drop objects, how long does it take for those objects to hit the ground? And how does gravity work in that? Uh, you also get some of the fundamentals of electricity and how that works and how basic circuits work. Then as you move on, you start to get into sort of more complicated systems. You'll move on to like a classical mechanics course where you say, OK, well, we're talking about throwing a balls, but we're ignoring the air that you were throwing that ball through and so now we're going to take in the drag forces and everything else and try to help you understand the real how you could really calculate how far that ball will go when you throw it then you start getting into sort of the more novel and kind of weird parts of physics where it no longer becomes super intuitive so like quantum mechanics where particles stop behaving like normal particles and instead they're these weird wave things that you can only describe them mathematically uh, but it's a cool thing because then that actually predicts things that you can actually see in real life uh, so you'll start studying that you can study you know more intense things like general relativity which is just weird things that happen if you're moving really 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 fast or if you're moving close to a black hole or anything like that, you can, it totally changes the way the world works. And it's something that, you know, is a bit more complicated that you'll kind of build on from all the stuff in the past. Uh, at the same time, while you're taking these, you also will be taking math courses and working your way up in the math. And those kind of go hand in hand with the physics. As you do more and more complicated physics, you get more and more complicated math to go along with that. And you just kind of build on those. And then usually in your senior year, you also start to take classes on electricity and magnetism and really getting in depth with how that works and also trying to take some labs as well and get some hands-on experience. So one of my labs, we basically just went back and recreated experiments that they did in the early 1900s, basically. We went back and did these you know, really, cool, really cool experiments that were really hard to do back then and really groundbreaking back then, and we go and do them now and reproduce these results that they wrote about you know, 100 years ago. Um, so you'll typically get that hands-on lab experience uh, later on in uh, your coursework.
So yeah, so obviously uh, taking physics classes in, you know, in high school and stuff, if your school offers them, is really good. There's even AP classes now in physics that you can take, uh, physical science classes, those sorts of things. Also, getting a head start on the math, like you'll take math classes in college to go along with this, but if you need a head start taking pre-calculus or calculus or those sorts of things, that'll really help you out a lot. And then one that you might not think about is computer science as well. It just turns out that you almost always will do something with computers when you're trying to do physics, especially at the higher levels. And so if you can take some uh, computer science courses really early on, that will put you way ahead of everyone else and really just be you know, one less hurdle you have to get over later on. Um, and it's also a great skill mark for, you know, for getting jobs in industry down the road, even if you don't continue with physics. The biggest thing, and I tell new students this all the time and everything, is to ask questions. Uh, all the time, I found myself taking classes sometimes, and I'd be like, I really don't understand what's going on, but I don't want to look stupid. You will look way more stupid later down the road when you don't understand this basic thing because you never bothered to ask that question early on. And it gets harder and harder and harder. And even going on through like graduate school and all that, we still have this issue all the time. So ask questions, try to really understand things. and. You'll be surprised that teachers will really try to reach out to you if you go to them and say, look, this makes no sense to me. They will try to reach out to you and try to make sure that, try to figure out you know, where you're misunderstanding it and really help you out with that. So yeah, just ask questions, ask for help if you get stuck. Don't beat yourself up of it. Don't worry about what other people think because if you don't know it, chances are everybody else doesn't know it either. Somebody else at least is stuck on that too. And even if they don't, do it for yourself, you know, just so you understand things fully.